Hello! So, finally, uh, 25 FPS instead of the annoying uh, 30, because uh, all of the flickering stuff. Uh, so that's solved, that's at least one thing. Uh, a little bit more light, I hope it's enough to see anything. Um, yeah, so planar loudspeaker thingy. Uh, and there's one thing, I kind of prepared all this and then, well, something about open surface area, open area of metal, but I will explain that probably later on. But um, yeah, so what do we need if we want to make a planner? Um, first of all, we need a magnet. Ooh, my uh, tummy is uh, going wild. Uh, this is the rubber magnet I, I got. And it's like, um, it's quite dark here, by the way. Let's lock it like this. Um, yeah, it's uh, eight and a half millimeters wide, three millimeter thick. Uh, it's not strong, as you can see, but it's uh, it will do the job. It's uh, weaker than the magnet pen magnets we uh, found out in some tests before. Um, at least because it's thicker than the magnet pen magnets. Uh, the result is the same as the magnet pen magnets in terms of output, but uh, since this is thicker, it should be stronger, which it ain't. It's only stronger because this is a wider piece of magnet. But if I cut it down to the same width as the magnet pen, then uh, it's the same output, thus less strong since it's thicker. So. There's more material there. Um, yeah, these rolls, uh, is, uh, it's 50 meters of the stuff. And uh, we need this one and, oops. And I cut a small one, which is uh, of course not eight and a half millimeters, but 3.5 or something for the tweeter. Um, to cut this is quite, quite an annoying job because it's also a size that's not common so you have to cut it or custom uh, custom make it or let it make by extrusion which is quite expensive because the die is quite expensive or so uh, cutting is the only option for me and probably for you as well unless you're a manufacturer of rubber magnets um, so yeah and then what we need, the basic materials, metal. And in this case, uh, this is a perforated metal sheet. Um, and if you order this kind of sheet, they have uh, two things they want to know. Well, the thickness for, for once, but this is one millimeter. It's uh, thick enough, I think. And then they want to know uh, R and T. And uh, it's like this, you can see um, it has a pattern. And that pattern is, is this in frame? Yeah. The pattern is like this. And then you have the holes here. Although this is not a perfect, uh, um, this is not a <laughs> perfect one. It should be a little bit more like this. Okay. And then this size, is T and the size of the hole uh, is uh, R and in this case uh, R is uh, 3 and T is 5 so the distance of the center of the hole to each hole is 5 millimeters and R is 3 so um, <coughs> in the end you should get like um, uh, an, 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 well, if you you can calculate it, there's a calculator online, so I'm not gonna do it. But this will result in something like thirty two point six percent open area, I think. Well, and the thing is, well, I'm sorry, I ride like a a child of like maybe six year old, but I can't help it. It's just um, it's just me. But uh, it's a 30, 32.6 or something like this. And uh, well, I just thought, thought of it that maybe uh, it's not the right size. 
but it's the only size I could get quick. So I kind of used it for a while. And then I thought, well, let's remeasure MagnaPen's open area. And then I'm not talking about the complete plate because MagnaPen uses, they have like um, their magnets. Is this in frame? Well, almost it is not. Let's do it like this. So they got their magnets, these strips, and the wire will run in between them. But then they got holes here. So they only have holes where it really matters. That's for one. And these holes are like uh, one, one point, 1.5 millimeter in diame diameter. And then they are apart, I, th I believe it was uh, from the edge of the hole is 0 0.668 or something, or 65. Uh, so, um, well, you add up the half of the diameter, uh, diameter, bleh, diameter of the hole, well, maybe well, just aim 1.8. 1.5 will do by the way uh, that will be well I don't really care what it is but in the end it results in an open area of 53% and um, well compared to this metal it's only 32.6 so it's well it's not exactly twice but it's quite a lot more so uh, yeah um, I should pick metal with uh, another T for once and uh, the, the, the whole size should be different. And also because the holes of magnet pen are uh, aligned to the magnets. If I uh, put some magnets on this metal it, w it won't be aligned everywhere. Sometimes there's even uh, no open area at all because the magnet blocks it. And where the wire is, there is um, only metal. So, for instance, if you got more holes here, it could be that the magnet just sits right, right on top of it like this. It's gonna be a bit messy. And then the wire runs in between, and then the neck magnet starts, and it. Both the magnets are blocking off the holes. I can draw it probably better. <laughs> so you got the two magnets and then uh, the holes will be, for instance, uh, here. And then uh, there. And the wire is running in, in between here and then there is no holes at all. So it, it kind of sucks. You see, my drawing skills are um, pretty shitty. <laughs> it's also the first time I do it because I rather don't write or draw anything in, in public. <laughs> it gets me anxious because I write like a child, but okay. Um, so, but anyways, we're, I am gonna use this metal because I bought it and... Um, well, I might order some new metal somewhere else. This shop doesn't have many perforated sheets, sheets so um, this will do. Okay, so we got the magnet, we got the metal, then we need some um, uh, spacers. This is some HPL. Um, it's four millimeters uh, thick. So if you use it as spacer with the three millimeter magnet, then you would uh, end up if you can see it you see with a ridge and this is the spacing the foil is gonna have to the magnets so you can see it like the maximum excursion in this case it will be around one millimeters um, so we have to glue it on the on the stator I will do this in the next uh, video I think so I'll, I'll, I'll do the whole thing from start to finish and I'm not even sure if this panel is gonna work. I, I don't know if I got the right width or um, 
size or in this case the metal kind of could be screwing me over with the open area which is too low um, so we'll see what else do we need we got magnets we got the spacers we got metal well we have to glue the metal and I use uh, this uh, epoxy this one is uh, leaking it's really nice um, two-part epoxy 10 minute epoxy but you could use any epoxy could be a 15 or 20 minutes epoxy because in the end it still has to like dry for 20 hours or something or 12 hours whatever uh, pretty long at least it's definitely not 10 minutes <clears throat> um, yeah then of course and I didn't grab it we need mylar don't have mylar right now but then the next thing we need 3M 30 and F and now the thing is this is not 30 and F this is 30 I thought I ordered 30 and F but there is I think something with European naming and and American style naming in 3M products because this is called the scotch well and the other one is fast bond but if you look it up you always end up with the same uh, PDF that's uh, talking about 30 and F and it also has the same properties and stuff so I think this might be just the same but has a different name I'm not sure I didn't open one this one yet and I got some old stuff left which is 30 and F so we'll probably see if this is uh, exactly the same or not but we need this to um, glue the mylar to the frame and as well to glue the wires to the mylar which brings me to the uh, wires itself I'm gonna use um, this aluminum wire and um, it's hard to see um, this one is gonna be the low end or the mid-range wire so it's the thicker wire and uh, this one is gonna be the tweeter wire both are um, aluminum wire enameled aluminum wire this one you can solder which is really nice and this one uh, you can which is quite annoying you have to strip the enamel, enamel uh, layer and then use some sort of flux to to uh, solder it uh, oh yeah well another glue we need this is some cheap um, spray glue and it just uh, helps you to put the wires on the mylar it's not doing much I mean it's not holding it in the end but it's just to tack them down and then use the 3m 30 in it <clears throat> so I'll get the cheap stuff and not the 3m 77 I think it's called because it's like uh, really expensive it's like 15 euros a can or something and this is like two euros or something and it worked for me so far so um yeah oh yeah well we need to space the magnets apart on the metal frame and there are two ways um, probably more ways to do it but if you got the metal uh, if you don't have a cnc machine which probably not many have but um, start building I think because it's uh, nice so if we glue this on here for instance um, we need a space between this magnet and the next magnet what you can do let me see is this the right magnet yeah they will stick together so what we can do is get some sort of spacer this is a two millimeter piece of plastic, but depending on which kind of, uh, what kind of gap you want. When you're gluing, you just put it in between and just drop the magnet in. So you get the same spacing every time. Get a longer piece of plastic, of course. Uh, but I, because I do have a CNC machine or router or whatever it's called, I made this jig 
if I can find it, there it is. This one, and um, I kind of made a layout already of the panel. So this is where the tweeter uh, part is, and this is the, the mid-range part. This is all completely random why I choose these sides. Uh, these sizes, except for being um, the amount of coil that's gonna be here in between the magnets will end up uh, at around four ohm. So there is some sort of reason why it is like it is. But um, if this is enough mid range to compensate the drop off uh, at the lower frequencies, I don't know. We'll see. <clears throat> but uh, in here you can just drop in the magnet and then um, that's a bit of a tight fit but well and you do this uh, with all the magnet then you put glue on it and you put it on a metal frame uh, and this way you can get a well a bit nicer looking panel because they all will be straight and the distance between the magnets will all be the same. So that's why I made this because I thought, well, if I'll make two panels or maybe, maybe more then this would come in handy. So yeah. That's about the stuff we need. What else do we need? Well, we could use some um, copper tape, just some plain old copper tape, uh, to to connect the uh, the aluminum wires to. Or you could get some uh, circuit uh, board. There's some bare copper printed circuit board uh, to uh, to solder the wires to because they have to be somewhere on the frame so you can connect your uh, other wires to your. Um, amplifier and, and such because the aluminum wire is quite prone to breaking I mean you it's you see you can just snap it off so you have to solder it to some sort of connection point and then use some other wire <clears throat> what else do we have I think uh, that's about that's about it oh yeah we might need a beer uh, and depending on uh, if you smoke, you might need a smoke or something. And um, yeah, some sandpaper would be nice as well. And a garbage bag, but I'll, I'll explain when we are going to start gluing the frame. So that's it for now. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny video. And I hope it's a little bit better quality than before. My hands are still red which they are, but at least the color balance is a little bit better than before. Okay, see you next video.